this is going to be a quick video just to show two things in this kernel convolution patch. Uh, the first is setting up the jit.cell block so that you can type directly into it. And then secondly, we'll use jit.fill and some messages to fill our kernel matrix. We will not be actually talking about what kernel convolution is in this video. So if you don't know what that is yet, I recommend this website here. Um, as a great visual demonstration, and I'll also try to put some videos in the comments that I think explain it really well. Now, jit.cellblock is a display of the values that are in our kernel matrix. And uh, by default, when we make a new cell block, here it is, jit.cellblock, it looks like this. And if we go over to our inspector, we have a bunch of options for this cell block. By default, we have what's called selection mode is one cell. And so when we click on this, we can't actually do anything to it. I'm typing in and I, I can't put them in. If I want to change this so that I could actually type with my keyboard, I can change my selection mode to this last selection here, inline edit. And now when I go back and I double click in locked mode, I get a cursor, so now I can type in a number. And I can do this for all of the values. Um, I could also type in words, write symbols, etc. But for a kernel matrix, we don't need that. We are just looking at floating point values. So I'll click on my kernel matrix jit.cell block, go down here, make sure my selection mode is selected inline edit. I don't feel the need to have my scroll bars here, so if I want to get rid of them, I can also uncheck that, and then that looks a little bit nicer. Okay, lock my patch. Now I can go and I can type in whatever values I want in here. So I'm just gonna type in a box blur here. I want all my values to be the same in each cell and I want them all to add up to one so that I'm not falsely brightening my image. So I put that into my cell block. Now, if I want this to be updated into the kernel matrix here, right now it's not, okay? I typed it in, but it's actually not recognizing that this is this. And I'll prove it to you. I will click on this convolve, uh, click on this bang, which sends my original matrix through the convolve here, and it should be blurring it, and I'm not getting that. And the reason for that is that I haven't actually let the matrix know that I want these values, and the way that I let it know is I send it a bang. Now that I've clicked on that, if I go through and I click up here to redo this operation, I now have a blurred image, a box blurred image. The jit.cell block object is a little different from the other max objects we've seen in that this object is actually paired through here, right? So you saw that I typed this in and I actually didn't do anything else to here. I just clicked on the bang to trigger it. So it's, you have to sort of, it's weird. You have to know that when you type this in, they're connected through the inlet. It's almost like it's going backwards up into this matrix, um, which is unusual for max. Um, so the only thing that we really need to, to do here, because we have this weird but, but uh, magical trick, is we need this bang to be triggered every time we type in a new value. And we can set that up by taking the outlet, second outlet here from my cell block which is just sending out the values of the cell. It's really not important what it's sending out. It's only important that when I type in something, I get some sort of data out and then a bang, and this will do it. So just type this, type in, let's change to one, one, one. So you can see that I was getting data out here. You could see that the bang here was being triggered, updating the matrix, and this should look a little bit different, and yes, it does. Notice it is very, very bright because now the values that I've put in here do not add up to one. Okay, so now we have a way that we can type in our own values and that's really cool. There's a problem with this and the problem is that if we close this and then we go and we reopen it, okay, they're gone. 
the cell block did not save my values. So in order to, 150 here, in order to save my values, I can use something called jit.fill. So I have this up here, this object, and jit.fill is going to fill the matrix values by row, one by one. So let's set our dimension to three by three here. And now I have named this matrix kernel and I have told jit.fill also that I want it to affect the matrix named kernel by typing it in here. And so now when I click on one of these messages, it's going to send the values into the kernel. So you see, I clicked on that and this little, this middle target cell became one. If I click on this one, it's gonna go one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one. We'll start here on the rows, just let's watch it. There you go. So if you wanted to fill your kernel with these messages, you just have to make sure that you get them in the right order. Now, if you have a message that's shorter, right, let's say, uh, let's do all ones here. So if we send three ones and I actually have nine cells to fill, it's just gonna fill the first three cells that it gets to. So there we go. And it left all of the others the same. Now, again, when you close this and you reopen it, that matrix will not be saved, but I can easily fill them by setting my dimension and clicking on my message. If you wanted to be even more fancy than that, you could set this up. With a load bang. Load bang is an object that sends out a bang when you load the patch and we will hook this up to be an identity matrix right away. See if that works. Save, close, reopen. Da da, it didn't work. I think because it probably did this first. Let's just put a delay. We'll wait half a second. See if that works. Save, close, reopen. It did. It worked. 